Hello and welcome everybody to another Vectornator tutorial. My name is Sander Staub, I'm an illustrator, graphic designer and muralist based in Zurich, Switzerland. And today I'm going to show you how I use Vectornator to turn one of my illustrations into outlines that I could then plot on a laser plotter and turn it into a stencil that made the creation of one of my murals much, much easier. So I hope you're ready. Here we go. All right. Here we are again, my desk, my iPad, my pink background and the pixel graphic that I will be turning into a vector. This is an illustration I previously made for myself and then my client really liked the design so she wanted it as a mural in her home. So we're obviously going to use this exact illustration to trace and prepare for the laser plotter that will create the stencil. I'll explain later exactly what that means, don't worry. When the client came to me with the request, I asked for some photos of the wall where she wanted the mural to go. And I also asked for the dimensions of the area. Pretty logical, right? But maybe easy to overlook. So please always ask for these two very important things from your client. I'm going to show you what she sent me. So she wanted to have her mural here and by asking her for the dimensions, I was able to figure out how high I have to place my mural so it would not be covered by the sofa. I was also able to place the sun and the moon by incorporating the lights of the terrace. So the sun would actually light up at night, which is very beautiful. Essentially, based on the width and height, I knew how big I could prepare the artwork. If you can, also ask for a photo of the texture of the wall, because it can make your life easier or harder. So it's important to know what sort of brushes you need to prepare and you can estimate how much time it will take to complete. The reason why I opted for a stencil for this project is because it's a fairly small mural, as you can see. A little bit more than 2 meters high, maybe 3 meters wide. In order to get all these fine details right, I decided the stencil is better than freehand. I do a lot of freehand as well, though. I've seen people use a projector where they projected the sketch on the wall and then traced it. But this is my process for this specific project. And it's especially cool for me to do this since I have a laser plotter in the same building as my studio. How convenient, right? All right, enough prep now. Let's turn this artwork into vectors. Okay, now we have this artwork as a reference layer, which I am renaming as we speak. I'm going to lower the opacity by now you guys know why. It's to be able to see what I'm doing while vectorizing. Then I'm making another layer because I'm actually going to vectorize in parts because each individual layer is going to be much easier to order, place and adjust in relation to others. Again, you'll see what I mean if you stick around. A lot of anticipation, I know. The hair is first. It's a pretty easy shape. Easy shapes get me in the flow faster, I find. I'm going to use the pen tool, which is quite unusual for me actually. Usually I'm a pencil tool nerd, but the pen tool will give me the precision I need. And now I'm doing a second odd thing. I'll use pure black. I never use pure black. And let's see what two points thickness looks like. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. So my fill is off, just stroke is on. And I'm doing this very, very fine outline in order for this to be prepared for the plotter. So just tap and drag to create the path. As you can notice, I always drag the node in the direction my path needs to take. So if the path goes down, I pull down. If it goes up, I pull up. Feel free to adjust along the way with the node tool as well. Sometimes I do it as I go, but sometimes I do it in a bulk at the end. Where I have deeper curves, just like the ear shape, I hold down one finger on the canvas so I can move one of the handles individually. Then continue your path, just as you normally would. Same here in this corner. Finally, tap again on the first node to close your path. So basically I want the laser plotter to cut inside this outline that I just drew. In terms of the stencil, this is negative space. But in terms of my artwork, this will be painted in. That's why this is all connected together. Now this strand, I'm just going to add separately and then combine them together. Instead of going all around this thin strand, I prefer to go down the middle more or less 
doesn't have to be perfect. Then I increase the stroke, so I'm basically trying to match the thickness of the strand I see underneath. And now let's turn this into an outline. This I will invert and let's unite both with Boolean. And then when I'm back in outline, I can see this worked and it looks the way it should. I have quite a few nodes here, something I'm not a big fan of. So I'm going to delete them to give this a smoother transition. I can tweak these nodes or not, because again, this is a stencil, so we'll end up coloring quite a bit outside the lines anyway. So you can give yourself the freedom of leaving the nodes as they are and not make this completely perfect. It will look good in the end, I promise. And this is the process that I keep doing for the rest of the areas that I want to be laser cut. So you can just watch me do the rest. So here I am basically still doing the hair, not the face details. Then of course, tap again on the last node to close. We're only creating closed shapes here. As for the strand, I'll do it just like the last time. After a few more adjustments, I'm going to very quickly show you that now I have the hair layer done. So as I previously explained, the laser plotter is going to cut along all these lines, making this the area that I can fill with spray paint. It seems theoretical now, but you'll see later why we're doing what we're doing when I'm creating the actual mural on the wall. And the hair is just one layer, meaning it's just one stencil, one of many that I will stack on top of each other. Next, I'm going to make another layer for all these details on the face and body. Then, finally, I'm making another layer for the decorations, for the leaf, the moon and the sun. So, let's do it! First, let's create a brand new layer for the details. One tricky part about tracing some of the details is that I have to leave what we call bridges open. So let me explain it with a leaf. If I were to draw this leaf exactly the way it is, this entire leaf shape will be cut out, which is not what I want because I want to preserve all the details inside here. You always have to think of this when creating a stencil. It does not have to be necessarily for laser cutter, it can be just a stencil that you make yourself by hand. The way to make bridges is easy in principle. Let's draw the leaf only until here. Let's delete this last node and then I'm going to start again here, not uniting these two. And then stopping here. Why? Because now this will be cut and this will be cut. And due to these bridges, whatever is inside the leaf will still be connected to the stencil and therefore will not be cut. This means that we can add these cool details now. Again, leave some space for the bridges. Here we're also gonna rely on our stroke to outline trick since it's so much easier. Anything to ease the workflow, cause we have a lot of work to do. See, even with this leaf, we're not done. Wherever I see that the stroke is not connected, I will just delete some parts of the path to create more space. I can always connect these lines later with a brush when painting on the wall. So these act more as a guideline and they don't have to be perfect. From a technical standpoint, the way I create the bridges is by adding an extra node close to the end of the line. Then I just delete the last node and that's it. All right, let's move on. Here with a circle, I will show you another way to create bridges. I create the entire circle and then with the node tool, I add two little dots here 
Then I select the top node with the scissors tool and I delete it. And this is what I want. Here for the face details, luckily, I did not have to create too many bridges. Almost all that you see needs to be cut as is. But here again, we have another case with the eye. If I would connect the eye completely to the lid, the eye would fall out. Oops, sounded so gory. Sorry about that. Um, so, but let's just start here and end just about here. And now I have my guidelines. Depending on the size of the mural, make sure you don't create elements that are way too small. Otherwise, the machine will go crazy. All right, I'm getting a bit too detailed here. It's just a habit. But in the end, you will always be able to finesse this on the wall itself. Okay, so here we have the elements we've been working on so far. I just want to stress again that we're creating three layers, the hair, the details on the face and body, and then the moon, sun and leaves. Try to reduce your drawing to three simple steps. One, you paint the outline. Since I already have the hair all around her, I honestly don't need to make a special stencil just for that. Let me show you what I mean actually. So here, after I've painted her hair in dark blue, I already know where her body is. The only thing missing is this, but I definitely think I can connect the dots. And this, which I can also just improvise. Then this is the details layer, which I just place on top. I'm going to use the nose shapes to align both these stencils. This is how I'm going to build my complexity. Okay, let's move on. I'm also going to add these shadows here. It's going to make a big difference. If you think you'll need help with the outline at the bottom, one of the easiest options would be to actually create a line down here, which will help you recreate the exact same curve as the original drawing. Here's another time saver. Since we have some symmetrical elements here, you know that we're just going to duplicate, flip and position in place. Let's see it again. Here's my detailed layer. Here's my hair layer. And now the last layer, the decorations. Luckily, I think this layer is not too complex, so let's finish it quickly. Here I'm making the moon by creating one big circle, one smaller circle, and then I apply Boolean subtract or both. One of my favorite tips. All the leaves that are filled in are super easy. I can just redraw them with the pencil tool. Finally, am I right? Mm, let's increase the smoothing so I do not have to do all this extra work adjusting the notes. Again, a little OCD kicking in. Oh, I forget to make this into an outline. Wait a second. Here we go. With the pencil, I'm just going to redraw this. And now I'll be more precise when connecting all these elements together. So let's turn this into an outline. Invert everything actually. Let's unite and then reverse back. Now all of this is connected and looks super good. Now for the empty leaves, I will do the same, but outline just enough to leave space for the bridge because I want whatever is inside the leaf to still be part of the stencil. In case I have not said that a million times already. I then turn all of this into one big shape with Boolean Unite. Let's quickly mirror and see the final decorations layer.
And I know I've been showing you guys these layers over and over, but here are all the three that I am going to plot. You might have noticed I tried to reduce it as much as possible because then, first, the stencil is easier to make, second, I keep my expenses low, and third, sometimes more is less. And with stenciling, it's best if you can convey your message in a minimalistic way. It's simple yet effective, and we also have quite a bit of information in the overall design. What the plotter reads is these lines that it will cut. Whatever is a closed shape will be completely cut out. The printer should give you all the information on how thin the lines should be. From experience, I know these should be between 1 point to 0 0.25 points. Wow, that's difficult to say. But for the sake of you seeing what I'm actually doing here, I kept it at 2 points. Okay, now I'm going to duplicate this three times, actually four times. Why? Because I want to preserve my original, of course, as I back up. I am fanatic about labeling everything. As for the rest, I will delete the unnecessary layers and rename stuff accordingly. So this is going to be my hair layer, my details layer and my decorations layer. All these are the actual files I will be sending to the printer in either PDF or SVG format or EPS actually. So after a quick visit to the laser cutters, here's what happened the day off. Here's me doing the hair. So you can see the plotter needed to split the stencil in three, which is not a big deal since they are super easy to align. Now here's me filling in the gaps and painting the skin based on the outline of the hair. Then I'm applying the details. And here are the decorations. After all that, I'm taking a small brush and finessing all my lines, connecting all the dots and just making sure the final result is crisp. Speaking of which, here it is. I'm super happy with how it turned out. I know I say this about everything that I do, but I'll be damned if I'm not my own biggest fan. It's a pretty great feeling. As always, thanks for watching. I really love creating this video for you guys and I know I got a little bit carried away with all the explanations, but I wanted to make everything clear. So let me know in the comments below if it all made sense. And if you liked the tutorial, follow me on Instagram at sandra.staub and stay tuned for more. Bye!